We have let our talent booker Spencer know that uh, we're ready for Gary Busey. You tell him Ga- Gary Bussey. <laughs> you say his name. <laughs> Gory. Hi, Gory. <laughs> Gory Bussey. He's coming in. He's uh, He's got a play yeah. here in New York called right. uh, Perfect Crime, Allegedly. which is now through December 4th at Times Square's Theater Center. It's the... It's the theater in Times Square. I think it's right under the yeah. Snapple sign. Right. Let's see. There oh, he boy. is. Yeah, right here, sir. Jim? Hello. Hey. hey, good to see you, guys. Have you got your shirt? Gary. What's that? Last time I saw you, I said you got to get a shirt that says sperm farmer on it. Oh, my yeah, God, he yes. <laughs> he did tell me last time to get a shirt that says sperm farmer. No, I haven't, but I've used my mouth as one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your mouth doesn't count because the only thing that comes out of that is bad spit. You're That's absolutely right. correct. <laughs> That's right. I'm glad you else. made it in. It's a tough time to get in the building because the, <laughs> the elevator system well, is messed up. Come on, Adrian. I'm Adrian. sorry. You're knocking Gary over. Would you help him out Jesus a little Christ. bit? Jesus, Adrian. No, he's no, not. He's he terrible hasn't. at his job. No, he hasn't. Adrian. Get first, right? Jesus Christ, Jesus Adrian. Let him get seated Christ. first. Sorry. He's not, he doesn't know what to do. You're about the family in Arkansas. Uh, uh, Adrian, now put the mic by his mouth so he can, we can so hear. Poor. Tell me. He couldn't meet the poverty level. Yeah. In order to make his meat, they had to jack the dog off into a bag to feed the cat. No, I didn't hear that. I've not heard that. No. <laughs> you, you were the, you're in the family, buddy. I should be. I pretended you're I was the cat. The, no, you're the number one dog jacker in Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> you, you had, had it not been for radio, Jim. Oh, you guys are in here. Had it not been. Hi, yeah. Okay. Who, I, just who, got, I just got, saw my wife's eyes. Stephanie, look at me. And that's a joke I should never have told. So we'll dismiss that. Cut right, it out, edit it. Right, well, cut it was stricken from the record. <laughs> that will never happen again. You don't have to worry about that. Well, welcome, Gary Busey, to, to Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, last time you were up here, you were talking to us all about the, uh, what are the words that have initials for things? Like, fart was They're like... they called Buseyisms. Buseyisms. Yeah, you were telling us all about the Buseyisms last time you yeah, were here. Yeah, and the, I don't do it with proper names, but I did one with Trump when I was uh, doing Celebrity Apprentice. Mm-hmm. And T R U M P stands for Taking Redirection Understanding Massive Power. That's right. And it's accurate too. Yeah, yeah that does it, is, it, yeah. it works for now too. Sober. Sober is a good word. That's Sober. what we all need to know. S O B E R yeah. right. stands for son of a bitch, everything's real. Hey, <laughs> Jim, you're true. a sober guy, is that right? Travis in there always said sober means slow on booze, enjoy the road. But I was like, that Never stinks, that Travis. That sucks. That's That's Travis, real. Travis, Gary? we're going to get you to see Dr. Phil quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen, do you know, have you, have you done Dr. Phil's show before? No. You wouldn't do it, right? Oh, yeah. You would? Of course you I've would. I've got lots of things wrong with me, but they're all good. <laughs> they're all good. I'm a good guy. I'm what, a good, what's uh, wrong with you that's good? What's something that you think is wrong with you but works in your favor? Right. Just breathing. Breathing? Okay, breathing is actually right, though. <laughs> no, breathing is right. Yeah. It's never wrong. I, ask me that question again. Okay. What do you, you said there's a lot wrong with you that, that works, but what do you think is something that's wrong with you that actually is good? Everything. Everything I do wrong, I be able to. I'm able to give it a good silver lining, mm-hmm. and create a positive influence in it. And the wrongness becomes a goodness because the goodness is better than the wrongness. But it's the wrongness that promotes, inspires, and, and motivates the goodness. So wrongness and goodness are the same thing. They're just different colors. Do you get that? No, but I think he's very hard <laughs> to argue with. Yeah, yeah. I, no, no, it's I, very I well thought out. Right, you win. <laughs> You can argue with him. You understand that, okay? So, 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 wrongness, and as long as it's... You, do you usually talk like that? So, so, so. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to gather you what you're said saying. I'm trying. I'm trying to gather. I love I this. Work I love on this repeating echo. Stuff. We're in an echo. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, please. I'm. I'm tired of the same <laughs> hey, shit. Hey, 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 hey. He does that. He just makes these little womanly noises. I don't like it either. You, got, you guys still living together? No, we separated. We were seeing other people. What yeah. happened? Yeah. He was having trouble maintaining an erection. For Jim. Which I'm sure you can. You don't understand. need a big one with this dude. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Just no. little, uh, little. Uh, what do you call them? Wiener sausages or what? That's a cocktail. Little hot dog Franks. Frank. Yeah. Little, Let's get off that. We yeah, don't please. want to talk about wieners. No, that's no, ridiculous. Not at all. That's ridiculous. This family's back there. What, what's, <laughs> Just what's, like, what's, what's going on? Are you guys having fun with this show? Because you're so good at it. We love yeah? it. I mean, I'm so proud and happy and honored to be here with you two clowns. Well, but thank by you. By the way, I want to take the words to spell clown yeah. and give you abuseism. Down, uh, C-L-O-W-N. Yeah. It stands for yeah. Creates laughter on Wednesday nights. 
We are on at night, but the replay is. That is something. <laughs> yeah, we, our replay hey, comes on. Clown, clown. On Wednesday nights, so we are a couple clowns. Does your family like the Buseyisms? It seems like, you know, it's fun for us because we see every couple years maybe, but it could get old very, very quickly. Yeah, do they, do no, they it, try doesn't, them it doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. I would, I would gather it might. No, or do you does. change them? Well, that's, that's your, your limited way of thinking now. Yeah. Right. But you get the Buseyism book, and you read it, and you read, open it to any page you want to, mm-hmm. and you'll see a word like simple. Right. Simple. What does that mean? Well, I know S- what that means. It's easy, right? What? Simple? It means, like, easy. No, no. Oh. That's one way to define it, that's yeah. That's a simple way of looking at it. That's a simple way of What's looking that? at What's it. What's simple mean? S-I-M-P-L-E stands for See It Manifesting. Precious, loving energy. That's what simple means? To yeah. manifest yeah. energy? If you learn that with your significant other, now that it's not this dude. Right, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> You'll get to third base quick. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's all it takes? No, I Just, don't know. No, I, that's not all it takes. It's how you talk. Uh-huh. Make a woman laugh. You, t- you look, look at her like her number. you're her number one servant. Mm-hmm. You're her number one fan. Mm-hmm. You love her like uh, the angels love the church. And uh, everything will go go right with you. And the best way to make it right with a woman, right? No matter what it is, mm-hmm. just agree with her. Yeah. Now that's got to be tough for you, though, right? Because no. oh well, no, because so you're not an arguer. You'll agree. But no, my... you're adored everywhere you go. So how can you look at a woman as if I'm your number one fan? Where everywhere you're going, I'm they're talk- a Gary Busey fan. I'm talking about my soulmate for 32 lifetimes, Stephanie mm-hmm. Irene Sampson Busey. Right. And she is what I call my angel with a whip. With a whip? Uh, yeah. That's exciting. You don't, you don't see that thing coming. It'll pop your ear off in a second. Yeah? So you'll, not, you'll, you'll, you'll lose arguments at home? I don't lose them. I just change them to make sure I can win in the end. How's that? Uh, it's easy. Yeah? Just, just use your eyes and use your smile mm-hmm. and use the warmth of your skin to make sure your palms aren't sweaty. Right. 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 So just about being charming, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, that makes sense to me, too. (laughs) (laughs) Are you mocking my voice? Yes, he is. (laughs) No, 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 no. Gary had to go to the bathroom. My name is Schmeck, and I'm a little guy, but I have an education. Oh, I see. Where did you get your education? Everywhere I go. Oh, so you're more like a street-educated little person. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. How old hey, are you? Hey, Smack, get out here. Oh. Okay, I gotta go. Okay, Smack's leaving. Oh. Sorry about that, guys. That's all right. I got it. I uh, understand. Chip's here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Smack. smack. <laughs> how, how much fun do you guys have doing the show? We are having a lot of fun. It's great. We're having a lot well, of fun. Well, you gotta make fun happen when it ain't happening, right? That's it. Okay, that's <laughs> the key element to success. Right. Making fun happen when it's not happening. Is that a euphem? Is that a Garyism or abusism yeah. for the word fun? F U N yeah. uh-huh. is finally understanding nothing. Right. Right. Well, now, do you make fun though when other people think like, "Hey, man, this isn't a time to have fun." Is do you do? Will you want to try to make something fun and other people get annoyed at you for like that? An no, no, times? I'm not going to annoy anybody because I'm laughing with hysterically yeah. inside. Inside, not okay. outwardly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So they can sense that your intentions are good. My intentions are always good. Yeah. yeah. Even even if people don't think my intentions are good, it's because they're not thinking about themselves righteously. Ah, so huh. it's on them. Okay. Yeah. It's never on you then. It's never on me. Yeah, it's always on me. What? It's always on me. But you said it's on them for not being righteous. You no, know, tonight when we go out to dinner, dinner's on me. Gotcha. Oh, nice. Gotcha. You got it. You got the checkbook. No problem. <laughs> yeah, got that Buddy Holly money. money. Yeah. No problem. All right. Hey, uh, Norton and Roberts, you know, that's a pretty good name for a law firm that uh, works on bent fenders. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> think we're a couple of ambulance chasers? <laughs> yeah, that's a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gary's really giving us a beating this morning. He really is. Long. He really is. So, Gary, what? You're in a play. <laughs> I mean, what? Your play, it starts tonight, right? I'm not on a plane. I'm sitting in a radio station. No, I didn't say plane. No, play. I said play. Oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm in a play. And the beautiful thing about this play is that it yeah. has the Guinness Book of Records of the longest running play in New York. And it's been uh. running It's been running in thirty for 30 years. And Kathleen Russell mm-hmm. has been in the play 30 years. And I'm a brand new guy in the play. But I started out in my, in my younger years doing plays. So I love them, I know them, and it's just so much fun to do. When you go into a play that has that much history, you worry about fucking it up at all? No, no, no. If you worry, whatever you worry about is going to happen. Oh. Because the word worry 
W-O-R-R-Y stands for Working on Ridiculous Routines Yearly. I see. And you don't do that. No, there's no time for that. No, no. So you don't panic that you're going to... Is it hard to do in front of a live audience after all these years just doing films? No, that's better, man. Because you, like you, got, you got the live audience out there feeding off your energy. You're feeding off them. And it's just like a spiral swirl of amplification in every direction your artistic being can make it. You seem to have a good memory, though. Like, you know, for you to remember the sperm farmer shirt, I didn't remember that. So you seem to have, like, a pretty good uh, yeah, really recall good ability. So for you, dialogue might not be, must not be a problem. Are you aware that you did have a traumatic brain injury? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 no. You didn't know that? I didn't know did that, you? no. No, it happened in the 60s. What happened? You were on a tricycle. <laughs> you fell off your tricycle in the 60s. You, you know what? Fell off, he fell off, fell off his tri- tricycle into a uh, fire hydrant. No, I was, oh, I was no. In, it was the seventies and I fell off my tricycle onto a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know that got a little that got a little blue, didn't it? You know what's funny about you guys? Right. Nobody hears the punchline of your joke, but you guys are laughing like farm animals. We're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's the point. As well, long you as you can't have a good time, get out. We're having right. fun. Right. As long as we're finally understanding nothing, we're good. That's all that matters. You know well, what that is? Yeah, fun. No, it's fun, fun, fun. That's it. Uh, it's beautiful to be alive. It's beautiful to be breathing. It's beautiful to be loving. It's beautiful to have things to do to motivate and inspire others. It's beautiful to have life. It's beautiful to have love. It's beautiful to be you because you are the best friend you're going to have. And that's why we're here. We're here to learn the truth of ourselves. Right. Accept it. Right. Love it. And when you know the truth of yourself, you can simply relax and know everything coming to you is their truth and it's not to be judged or hampered, or hit with a bat. Now, have you always been your own best friend, or there's times, you, like, I tend to be my worst enemy sometimes, too, so were you at one point like, hey, I'm my worst enemy, right. and now that you're doing better, it's like, now I'm my best friend? Well, what happens when you've had a traumatic brain injury like you and me? <laughs> there the are, tricycle accident. No, I got hit with a baseball. He might be right. Huh. No, it's a, well, that's what I am in the play. What? I'm a baseball bat killer. What do you mean? I'm an insane genius. Oh, you kill people with a baseball bat? No, that means I'm not acting. Everything's natural. That's, oh, boy. <laughs> I'm an insane genius. And no, I don't use a baseball bat. I make mine look like accidents. Oh. So when you had your, your brain injury, how long did it take you to kind of use I saw a documentary on that where guys, like, some guys never get better. Yeah. And, 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 like, what happened when you started getting better? What was it that first started to come back for you? Like, when you started, your brain started to heal? Well, I had to spend... Uh, Two and a half months in Daniel Freeman Hospital, and I had to learn how to walk and talk and eat and dress myself. And the doctor said, Gary, tell us when you're ready to go home. And I said one time, I'm ready to go home. And they said, why? When I put my shoes under the bed, I can smell them. I said, great, Gary, keep working on it. I know I'm ready to go home now. Why is that? Well, because the hospital is at the end of the runways, and the jets won't land because they'll kill us. That's why... All you hear is jets. Well, from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., Daniel Freeman's right under the flight path of LAX, and that's all you heard were jets. And they said, Gary, keep working on it. But I got out two and a half months early. I got out after two and a half months. And I went home and started over again. Short-term memory out of fight with. But all you people out there that are doing something that's concerning your computer, which sits on top of your neck, you must wear a helmet. You must wear a helmet when you're snow skiing, snowboarding, bicycling, rollerblading, skateboarding, motorcycles, and I even wear a helmet in the shower. You just in case. Just in case you never know where you might slip on the soap. And I get what you're saying about computer on your neck. You know what he's talking about, Jim? No, I don't have a computer on my neck. It's your brain. Oh, how do you like that? I like it. It's your brain. It's not only your brain, but it's yeah. your five senses in your mind. Did you lose any of your senses, or did any of them change? No, they got they got more keen. More delicate. Really? More sensitive. Yeah, it's like, whoa. You go to the other side and come back, you you know that there's so much strong life around you spiritually. And you don't have to be in a religion, but the spirituality is with you forever. So, so you, you, you find you're more perceptive now. Well, here's the deal. An organized religion, yeah, they are built for people to be afraid of hell. Mm-hmm. Spirituality is for people who have been there. I'm in the second group. Did you wow. see the white light or anything? Did you have any experience like that? Did I have what? Any, like, white light experience? Uh, no, no white light experience. I was there and surrounded by balls that were about as big as volleyballs moving all around me, amber, magenta, white, gold. And I was about 
a foot and a half long and a quarter of an inch wide, and that's your soul. And your soul is housed in the column of your spine. Hey! I knew I could wake you up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he Travis just barked. Wasn't, he wasn't tr- paying attention, was no, he? No, he wasn't. And I, I was, heard column of my I was, spine. In I was floating in spiritual space with these balls all around me, and three of them came up to me. The one on the left was Abalone, Mother of Pearl. Right. And that spoke to me in an androgynous voice telling me where I was going and what I needed to do, and I could come with him now and return to my body. Did it sound like that little guy, Skep, or whatever his name was? No, it didn't sound like me. <laughs> Get away from here, Smack. Who's, what, now, who is Smack? Smack. Uh, Not smack. 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 Oh. It's S M A K. Smack. Smack. Not smack. Smack. I said it right. Yeah, that's it. Smack. 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 Yeah. Fucking smack. Yeah. Do, you like, do you like my pants? <laughs> Chip likes your Fuck pants. Yeah. Smack. It's a garbage. Oh, man. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so funny with each other. You you're see, not funny. You're not funny at all. But to each other, no, you're a it's screen. funny because Smack went away. Chip came. Chip is a and character. then Smack left. Yeah. Who's, who's Trip? Chip Chipperson exactly. is, is he? He embodies. Who? He takes over. Chip Chipperson uh, takes over the body of Chip Jim Norton. Chipperson. The yeah. way is Smack it? takes over no. the body of Chip yeah. Chipperson mm-hmm. is not a legal name. It is. What's well, Lyle and Chipperson? He's very funny. Oh, yeah. who's Lyle? Lyle Chip Chipperson. He's a person who sometimes takes over the body of Jim Norton. Hey, bro, I got I got news for you, Sam. Tell me. You got to find a different way to entertain yourself. What do you mean? I mean, figure out something smarter. Yeah, please. <laughs> but I was talking to Smack a minute ago. That What's is the true. difference? Well, Smack. Yeah. <laughs> what's the difference yeah. with Smack and Chip? Yeah, what's the no, difference? No, no, they're two different identities. I see. Just like you uh-huh. and your buddy is. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like the cameraman over there. That's D-Bag. Yeah. This man who? D-Bag. D-Bag. <laughs> D-bag. Yeah. Yeah. What's D stand for? Douche. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he vomits a lot. He's a sick boy. Man, you guys are hilarity. <laughs> He's a Thank you very much. Boy. Dan, I'm going to stay here all day. Yes. Yes. Please do. By the way, that's is that your that's your son uh, uh, Jake behind yes, you, right? Yes, this is Jake oh, Beersy hey, behind me. Let me tell you something. You know what's this a great guy, movie? His first identity. Oh, I love man. that movie, and you're very scary in that movie. Very intimidating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His first movie was when he was five years old. I was doing a picture with Dustin Hoffman called Straight Time, and I needed a son. And Dustin said, "What about Jake?" And we interviewed him and put him together, and. He, he, he chose his own name, wanted to be Henry, mm-hmm. and he came out, he did every scene in one take, because he said, I'm only going to do this scene once because I'm drawing some trucks. And we went, oh, okay. And so we went through it. He did it. Perfect. On the way home, we're driving home, and I said, Jake, you did a great job today. You did everything in one take. You chose your own name. What do you think acting? What do you think about acting now? Mm-hmm. And he said, I think it's the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> he didn't like it. Uh, I said, well, why did you think it's dumb? Everything was perfect on there. Why do you think it's dumb? Because all you do is pretend, except you play like you're not pretending. And I'd rather be drawing a truck. Yeah, well, I get that. When you're five, I can understand that acting not being appealing. It, it, I'm not sure that I sounded like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of sounded like smack. Yeah, it sounded a little like smack. Yeah, you didn't sound like anything like me. I don't know if it's a genetic thing or not, or or, or, or what, but uh, no, I, I I did think acting was kind of a silly endeavor at the time, and um, I do like the fact that he's coined that phrase, and it uh, it, it actually is one of those things that it, it, it makes me think, because after 25 years of doing this myself, it's like, yeah, you know, the reality of it is, yeah, you do pretend and you play like you're not pretending. And so to a kid, it's, it's like, brilliant. no, if we're... That's brilliant. Mm-hmm. You know, we're playing cowboys and Indians. We're, we're doing cowboys and Indians. Of course, I guess that's so politically incorrect. I'm probably going to get... Don't tweet me, please. Well, what did you want to do when you were five? <laughs> what did you want to do? He wanted to draw like trucks. Weird. When I was, yeah, I was busy drawing trucks. Yeah. You know? Uh, in, henceforth, I've, I've gotten really into the whole desert racing thing out in California and Baja and all that. That's been one of my lifelong uh, in, endeavors. But, uh, you know, at the age of five, seems... I was really into playing drums because he had uh, his drum set in the living room because he, he got his start in, uh, in the entertainment industry by being a drummer in 1966 in a band that got a record deal. That seems dangerous, though. Like, if you're, you're racing now knowing that your dad had the accident that he had. Yeah, well, you know, I, I've always worn a helmet. Right, that's the difference. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah, and I got a cage around me. You know? Right. So, uh, you ever you ever worry about your son 
doing uh, 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 moving quickly in vehicles? No. No. This kid is great. Yeah? I, I helped him put an engine into a pickup truck, and he built things. He, I saw him build I witnessed him building a truck when we lived in Malibu West. He did it all from scratch. And there's this kid is doing this and making a train track out of an end train, which is very small, and building a bridge out of matchsticks. Just detail, detail, detail. I just walk by and go, hey, that's good. I wasn't with my son as I should have been in my heart. But that's I been see. changed. Yeah, but you're here now. Right. I'm here now, yeah. You're here now. Hey, how does the rest of the cast of this play uh, that is uh, playing at uh, uh, the Times Square's Theater Center, it's called Perfect Crime, now through December 4th only. It's a very limited run where you can see Gary Busey. But how does the rest of the cast deal with you because you know i don't want you oh. to take this the wrong way but you're you, you you're a bit of a handful well that's okay yeah i that does come with my dinner <laughs> right the, the situation is they're lovely everyone's lovely and Catherine russell mm -hmm. who plays the lead she is fantastic she, she's got she's got batteries in her that came from another dimension because she doesn't quit. She teaches acting. She goes and does this. She auditions. Then she's back doing the play. What well, made you do this one? Like as opposed to, I'm sure you've been offered other plays over the years. How come you haven't done them and you just wanted to do this one? I had. I was doing something else. Oh, you always other projects. Yeah, other projects. The only reason I ask about the rest of the cast is I remember the only time I've seen you perform as part of a team is the two seasons of Celebrity Apprentice, and in those seasons. People got frustrated with you, if I remember correctly. That's what people it looked got like. What frustrated with you? I saw it on TV. They weren't. You know what? It, you know what the truth is. Tell me. They were frustrated with themselves, and they were projecting their frustration with themselves onto me. Huh? And, <clears throat> yeah, because Mr. Trump took a very big shine to you. Yeah, he liked you. Yeah. Now yeah, Donald uh, would uh, write my name down at the top of the list when mm -hmm. it came to the Celebrity Apprentice. Mm -hmm. And Celebrity Apprentice All Stars. I was on the team that won with Trace Atkins. Right. What did he like so much about you? Who? Uh, Trump. What do you think he liked about you so much? I don't know. I don't know. He's right there in the boardroom. He, he'd call me a genius or a brilliant mind. Don't know where he's coming from. And uh, there, there's a common thing between me and Donald, and it's just a frequency, you know, that we have together. And it works. It works great. And uh, I'm very happy to have done that. I got to tell you one of the most hilarious things that happened to me that last year, I have a daughter that's four years old, and we took her to a new preschool at last year. So my she, granddaughter. She would, have been, she, she would have been three. And um, so, uh, you know, you're meeting the parents, the other kids, and uh, and I see, I see these other two parents, and one of them is this tall, beautiful, blonde woman, and then her husband is this guy that's got a big, long, gray goatee and tattoos all over his arms, you know, and... So she says to me, she goes, um, she goes, you, you, you're Jake, right? Your dad's, your dad's Gary, right? And and this is of course when Celebrity Apprentice is going on, and I said, yeah, yeah, my dad's Gary, and uh, and she said, you said Gary? Yeah, you. And uh, <laughs> that is your name. And and she said, she said, uh, my dad's Meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> and, and right there, I was like. That's cool. All right. You know, and we both had a big laugh because, you know, it was sort of like one of those moments of, oh, our crazy dads fighting over a shopping basket with some paints, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and there we were with our kids and they're playing together. So it was, uh, it was interesting. What do you, what do you great. think is the biggest misinterpretation people have about your father? I think the biggest misinterpretation, and I even get flack for it, like I'll, I'll, my agent will tell me, yeah, the casting people don't want to see you because you're crazy. Uh, what do you mean I'm crazy? Well, they've seen your dad. <laughs> but that's not me. Um, and I think the, the misconception about him is that he's uh, uh, this crazy sort of volatile, wild, unpredictable person. I think out of rhythm. I think that one of the things that they don't understand is 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 that he um, he's probably one of the, the the biggest hearted, kind hearted, most generous people, um, and, and extremely sensitive and extremely intuitive, and and probably one of the most brilliant people that I've ever met. And that's yeah. one thing that. That doesn't really go down. So you think the reputation for being crazy is over, over, uh, unfairly kind of surpasses the reputation of being a great actor and a good person? Well, as Hillary Clinton said, there's a there's a personal side and there's a public side. <laughs> and right. uh, you think that's true, Gary? Are you that brilliant? Let him finish. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, my grandfather, his dad was uh, was a Navy CB, an engineer. Uh, he was an extremely bright man. He was an architect and uh, and 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 on the genius level. 
level of IQ, and I, I think that there's a genetic thing, and Dad's not far off from that. Yeah. And yeah, he had a motorcycle accident, and that does make him a little short-tempered, and it does, you know, he needs a little bit Not anymore, bit of, not anymore, not anymore. Sometimes but, you get angry, though? No, but, but I think it's a frustration. Yeah. It's something what? that... What? How about your neurofeedback? What's the neurofeedback? Yeah, neurofeedback. Let's... Neurofeedback. Uh, I go see a girl named Shirley, mm-hmm. Stephanie and I do, and uh, she puts uh, four little little round things like batteries on your skull and then you watch a video and she has a machine watching your brain waves and she is it's it's like looking where your brain waves go and how you think and i'm i'm great i'm even what she said it's she said it's correct you gotta get up here <laughs> it's, it's correcting your brain waves Yep. I don't know. Yes. And I think there's a combination, yes. too, that, that also is not really publicized, and that is Dad was, uh, I think he really would have benefited. What really would have served him well is if he had started doing Broadway plays 30 years ago because one thing that he thrives on is the interaction with other people. Right. Yeah. Loves yeah. the audience. And he loves the audience. And, and yet in the film industry, when you're working on a film, you've got like four people around the camera, you know, a couple actors, camera guy, director, and that's about it. And and you do the scene, they go, cut, it's in the can, okay, let's go on the other one. And then it's quiet. And there's none of this. Yay! And so right, he, but you like that. Right, he loves it. Who that. doesn't? So right, sure. I love it. <laughs> he spent... Uh, You've never heard it. The better That's part true. of the 80s. <laughs> Conceptually, I love it. Exactly, <laughs> right? Okay. So go he ahead. spent uh, the better part of the 80s and uh, uh, the 90s running around to local rock clubs playing music, music and, and, and really thriving on the crowd and, and the people and... And the interaction yeah. there. And had he just done Broadway 20 years ago, I mm-hmm. think it really would have served him well. So this is going to be a fantastic endeavor, and that's why I came to see opening Would night. Broadway have been harder back then, though, if, the, yeah, li- if know, the lifestyle wasn't as healthy as it is now? Would Broadway have been harder to do with the drinking and the drugs? It might have been a harder thing to memorize been the been life. More fun. It, wasn't, it wasn't drinking. <laughs> oh. Not alcoholic. Oh, know, okay. so my, my drug of choice was a C note. Okay. And, and I mean the $100 bill and what starts with C. Sure. And I uh, did on that May the 3rd, 1995, and couldn't figure out why I was doing that. I was dancing with the devil. And the situation is when you dance with the devil, don't let him lead. You do the leading of the dancing, and the minute the song's over, maybe two beats before the song's over, remove yourself from the r- dancing ring with the devil. Right. Makes sense. And, Makes you, sense. and you said you're doing the, uh, the the thing with getting angry. Is, is it harder not to get angry with the brain injury? Does that cause you to fire off quickly? And what? Then... What? What? Gary never gets angry. He well, just, you, what, what he's was impulsive. Impulsive. He okay. He has no problem with anger so, at all. So how do you like control the impulsiveness? Like, what oh, happens? it's easy. It's easy. Where I am now at 72 years old, going through what I've gone through, having this beautiful firstborn son, Jake, and having the new son, Luke, who's six years old, and having my daughter, Electra. I have a strong family around me with nothing but love. It's like living with angels. And uh, the situation with losing my temper comes from anger. I'm going to take the letters to spell anger and yeah. give you abusism. A-N-G-E-R stands for... Right. Another negative grievance explaining rage. That works. It does. That works entirely. Do the word th- hate. The word hate. H A T E. Yes, 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 please. That stands for holding mm. a treacherous energy. Right. And I don't want to do that. No. Nobody wants no to do good. that. It's no good. Do you think a lot of people around here, they were talking about, they think that you're going to end up in the White House now because you and Trump have this relationship <laughs> that you're going to end up somewhere in the cabinet or doing something. I won't end up there, but I will be, I'll, be, I'll be, be going there. I'll hey. be going there. I'm going to I'm going to work on a dance contest between Pence and Trump <laughs> and Condoleezza Rice and yeah. uh, and maybe uh who's that other girl? No, no, she's not there anymore. So we won't mention that. I'm not going to do a dance contest. I'm just going to say hello to a good friend of mine. I'm so proud of him for doing what he did. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Were you surprised he won or no? Wait a minute. I'm so proud of him for doing what he is. Were you were you surprised he won or because you know him, you weren't surprised? I knew he was going to win in the beginning. You did. And we're watching, the, Stephanie and I were watching the elections that night on TV. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, uh, went to sleep, turned it off, and I got up in the morning about 5 a.m. And she said, Uh, hello? Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to say what I she said? I don't like when people quote me. Oh. Okay, I can't say anymore. Can I'm you just paraphrase? Happy with everything, huh? can, you, can you paraphrase? You can without, paraphrase. Without, nah, nah, nah. Can I what? A paraphrase. She didn't want to be quoted, so I was like, maybe you could paraphrase. Okay, right. Directly. So another Move great on. thing that people don't know about is that the <laughs> Buseyisms actually came out of the brain injury. 
uh, part of it's not his, hard to believe. part of his healing was putting words together and 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 learning how to speak. My mother and I had to teach him how to yeah. speak and how to eat and how to walk, and he was you know pretty much you know comatose in a wheelchair. So when he was learning how to talk, he was like he said. He was due to be released out of the hospital because he said, my shoes are under the bed and something I can smell. Nice so that type of thing um, was sort of spurned the whole Buseyism thing, which was him trying to put meaning on things and understand the language. My and- first Buseyism was I was writing in a book, and it was all about the past. It was about being betrayed. It's like, her, what happened? Why, did, why, why this? Or why this? How did that? Why? And I realized, man, you're talking about the past. Where are you? I'm in, I'm in the now. Now, okay, and now it came to me. Now stands for no other way. Boom. You got no in, choice. When you're in the now, you see, the past is uh, is history. The future yeah. is a mystery. And being in the now is a present because they call it the presence. We have to wrap you up and let you go to your no, next no, interview. No, no, I'm not done. I'm we not okay. done. Yeah, we're not trying to. They're telling us. <laughs> and by the way, I did, as long as you want. I did like witnessing <laughs> what we saw a moment ago, which was what he said at the beginning of the interview, agreeing with the wife. <laughs> yes, I noticed. Quite shocking, wasn't it? I, yeah, it was yeah. amazing. She stopped Gary in his tracks. She I didn't think like, that was possible. Nope. And Gary was like, all right, then it's a no. She made the zip it sign and Gary zipped it. Oh, Smart yeah, man. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah, he did. You know, when she starts talking, my brain freezes. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> she, okay, okay. <laughs> it's well, been good being here. Gary, everybody can see uh, Perfect Crime now through December 4th at Times Square's Theater Center. You can go to perfect crime.com. Get tickets. It's right in the middle of Times Square. It's across the street from, like, it's right by Caroline's. It's I would like to right go there. see this. Yeah. You know, you need ah! You know right. you need to because that <laughs> was yell. That was smack <laughs> running out the door with oh. a burnt butt. Oh. You need to go see it because I'm here for two weeks. Right. See it immediately. Don't hesitate. It's going to sell out. He's only going to be here for two weeks. And who knows? Maybe Smack will show up uh, yeah, in the middle yeah, of the play. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> Thank you, Gary Busey. 